Whether you're gluten intolerant or you just want to keep your options open, here are 10 different types of flour that you can grind at home. Some of them you can forage and some of them you can even grow yourself in the garden. Obviously wheat is the most common flour that we have access to but there are so many other types of flour that are available and with a little practice you can learn to bake with any of these other types. If you're planning on using any of these options for making flour yourself or even if you want to buy your own wheat berries and grind it yourself the one thing you're going to need is a mill. A flour mill you can buy them just a tabletop size they come in a range of prices I'll put a link to a couple of them down below so you can look at the different pros and cons of some different mills. A mill is a bit of an investment but if you're able to get all the rest of the flour bits for free then eventually it will pay for itself for sure. Now the first thing on my list is acorns. Acorns you can usually forage for there are often large oak trees around that nobody cares if you go and harvest the acorns from them. If you want to grow your own acorn trees they do take a really long time to get big and productive. The flour is really tasty and it's very high in protein and quite nutritious. They do take a little bit of processing to get the tannins out. They're the really bitter flavour that acorns can have. Different varieties of acorns have different levels of tannins so it's worth doing your research if you're planning on growing your own acorns as to which varieties are going to be the best for you to eat. Number two on my list is almonds. Almonds again grow on a tree so if you want to grow your own almonds you're going to need quite a few of them to be able to get a decent almond harvest. However you can often buy whole almonds for relatively affordable amounts um, if you buy them in bulk. Almond flour is becoming quite popular amongst people that are trying to eat low carb. It can be baked with, it has no gluten related quality whatsoever so you do need some specific recipes to be able to make them work but it's definitely doable and the upside to almonds is they're one of the few that you don't need a mill for you can actually just process them once they're dry in your food processor. Aramanth. Aramanth has been grown for many 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 years by the Inca and the Aztec as an option for flour. Aramanth is also known as pigweed in some places as the pigs love to eat it. It's really high in protein, quite nutritious. It's easy to grow at home, it's drought and heat resistant so it's great if you live in one of those areas that gets really hot. The only thing with Aramanth is it does need winnowed and uh, threshed and then it will need milled. Now buckwheat, despite its name it's not actually a wheat at all, in fact it's not even a grain, it's actually a seed. It's commonly used by gardeners as a green cover crop and it grows very very quickly to smother out the weeds. Bees and other pollinators love the flowers and it goes to seed very quickly. It does need threshed and it does need ground but it's a really legitimate option if you're wanting to grow flower alternatives for yourself at home. It does really well in poor soil so if your soil's not awesome buckwheat might be the one for you. Chickpea, also known as garbanzo beans. These grow similar to other legumes, so they're beneficial to your own soil. They grow relatively easily, and once they're dried, you can grind them up and make a great flour. Chickpea flour, it's also known as chana flour. It's commonly used in Indian cooking. It's quite a yellowy flour, very high in protein, makes really tasty things. Number six is corn. Now there's different options with corn. If you can grow sweet corn, you can dry that and treat it with some slaked lime like what they traditionally do in Mexico and then you end up with masa flour and that's where you can make your corn tortillas from. The other option of course is to grow some maize corn. It looks quite different to sweet corn but it has similar nutrient requirements and similar growing conditions. So if you can grow sweet corn you can probably grow maize corn just as well. Now the next one is actually a weed, it's curly dock and it grows worldwide pretty much uh, all over the place as a weed and the tiny little seed heads that it sends up those little seeds are actually edible they're high in protein you don't have to winnow them you can just grind them as they are and they make a really nutritious uh, flour number eight is millet flour so our birds love eating millet we've got some cockatiels which you might be able to hear in the background they're just over off to the side there and they love millet Upside, millet's really easy to grow and it makes a really good grain to grind into flour. You do need to winnow or thresh it to get the uh, little outside coating off but once you've done that it grinds very easily in a grinder. Number eight would be oats. Now oats were grown traditionally right up in the very northern parts of Scotland where it was traditionally very cold and very wet. They are a lot more tolerant to wet cold weather than what wheat or barley is. 
So if you are in a colder area, oats might be your go-to. They usually do need sort of thresh and winnow to get that outside coating off before you grind them. There is a whole list variety available, which does produce slightly less seed, but it drastically reduces your processing time. So it might be something worth looking into. The upside to oats, of course, is any extras you have, your chickens, your rabbits, any sort of animals you have out on the farm, they'll happily eat them as well. And number 10 on my list is quinoa. Now quinoa is a funny looking word. Some people mispronounce it as quinoa, but it's quinoa. And it is the cold weather cousin of aramanth. So it has been used in Peru for many, many hundreds of years as a flour option and a grain option there. Again, it's not actually a grain, it's a seed. And it could be a great option for you to be able to grow some flour options at your house. Do you grow any of these in your backyard? Let me know in the comments below. Have you got anything random that you happen to grind and make into flour? Do you have your favorite recipes that use non-wheat flours? Tell me about them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit the like button. And if you're into making your own staples at home, maybe check out this video on making your own onion powder at home. I'll see you in the next one.